rest on, my friend. To the pastor, pulpit guests, bereaved family, and friends, we thank God for our beloved friend, Kevin Henry Young. His truth, integrity, beauty of spirit are indelibly etched on our hearts. Kevin was the middle and high school friend of my daughter. During the course of those years at Snowden Middle School and the high school, Central High School, he became, he became a member of our family and like a son to me. Kevin was unique. He was a delight. Yes, he was a gentleman in every sense of the word. Yes, he was debonair, appear, appearing to have walked straight off the cover of GQ magazine. <laughs> and yes, he was a pleasure to be around with that million dollar smile and greeting that warmed all of our hearts. Additionally, Kevin had an authenticity and depth of character that made his brilliant million dollar smile emanate from the inside out. His beautiful smile was anchored to what he valued most in his life. His unyielding relationship with God compelling him to serve others and his community. His unwavering relationship with his family, standing in as a staunch big brother, guardian and protector of his sisters, offering an unparalleled source of strength to his brothers and being a loving, doting uncle to his nieces and nephews. And lastly, Kevin valued genuine relationships with his friends. Look around. Did he not touch you in some way? Did he not make you want to be a better person? Throughout Kevin's life, despite untimely circumstances, he stood tall like an oak tree. Whether he stood in his sparkling white tennis shoes, are his spit-shined leather shoes. Kevin Henry Young was a gentleman. He took the extra steps. He left his mark, a legacy of loving and caring that will last forever. He fought a good fight. He finished his course. He kept the faith. And now, he is with the Lord. Thank you. Second Corinthians 9 and 15 says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. To the pulpit ministering guests, Reverend D.L. Johnson, and to all of you all here, um, I am saddened um, by the turn of events. Wow. 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 Anyone who knew Kevin Young for an extent of time, um, knew that he would always exclaim, wow. 
whether you gave him good news or bad news, it was always wow. Wow, are my sentiments exact? Standing here, giving words over a friend, a brother beloved, and Kevin would have it no other way. Run the center behind the velvet ropes. <laughs> Everywhere we ran. I knew I was in good hands because I wasn't going to be treated cheap if I was with Kevin. <laughs> the brother was first class all the way. Uh, we would often go to the Grizzlies game and either he'll have tickets or I have tickets. And the first thing he'll ask me if I had the tickets, Lynn, where they at? <laughs> they on the lower level, they down low. I'm like, yeah, Kevin, they, they down low. Uh, so just recently, um, in January, matter of fact, I just came across some tickets, uh, and they were nosebleeds tickets, and I knew not to call Kevin, but it was, <laughs> I had a day off. It was King Holiday. I had a day off. I'm going to just call Kevin, not to go actually sit up in the terrace, but just to kind of just go walk around, because he always wanted to be where everything was happening. So I'm like, Kevin, I got some tickets. Where they at? I'm like, Kevin, they up top. You say you got some tickets? Guess what? You still got them. <laughs> And that was, that was him, uh, that was him. I would not, I would not trade Kevin uh, for the world, but to, to understand the bond that we had, you first had to remember or understand where the bond started. Um, and again, it, as has already been said, it's, it, it, it's not enough time. It's not enough time to go through all of the years, all of the days, all of the times that we spent together. Uh, but if I can sum it up real short, um, I was around 10 or 11 years old when our families met. Um, but the bond really didn't take off uh, until seven or eight years uh, later. Uh, so we're talking about a span of over 30 years of friendship, a bond that stayed together until he took his last breath. And I can just remember being in high school. My brother had left going to college in Atlanta, um, and I was at home by myself. And I just kind of took to doing my own thing. So much to the point to where my mother, I believe, called Kevin and said, Kevin, just, just talk to him. He's, he's just doing stuff. Just talk to him. And so Kevin called, and we talked. And Kevin, at that point, not only just called and said, well, I called, and I had a conversation with him, but God did something in that moment to where Kevin fortified himself in my life. Kevin cemented himself in my life. Kevin stood there in my life from that day forward. I didn't go seeking a relationship uh, with Kevin. We already had a, a relationship, of course, but I didn't go seeking the relationship to the point that it ended. And that could be nobody but God given what it is that I needed at that particular time. And I am so thankful and grateful uh, to this brother that it got so much to the point to where my brother began to get a little jealous sometimes. <laughs> so it just so happened if I called my brother, my brother called me, and I'll be with Kevin. I'll put him on speakerphone. He's like, what's up, man? What you got going? I'm like, man, nothing hanging out with, with my guy, Kevin. He's like, oh, look at the two sisters together. <laughs> <laughs> and so Kevin will look and be like, man, you know what haters drink, right? <laughs> Haterade. And it sounds like you've been drinking a whole lot of it. But that was my guy. That was, that, that was my partner. Uh, inseparable. Uh, the last time we spent together uh, was just um, a few weeks ago, uh, late last month. Uh, he called and invited me out to the men's conference uh, at Bellevue Baptist Church. Um, and that will prove to be our, 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 final, our final outing, our final date. Uh, and then he texted me a couple of days later, and he was like, look here, man, I want to... Um, I'm going to email you a list of things I just want you to hold me accountable to. And I'm like, man, it. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I said, matter of fact, I'm compiling a, a list of things together now. And so Kevin emailed me the list and 
just the things that that he wanted to do, just the things that he, he wanted to be. He, he wanted to be more for God. It's like, you know, I want to do better with, with my life. It's, you know, God has graced me. God has, has watched over me. God has allowed, allowed things to happen but not, but not take me, not take life away from me. God has been good, so I want to do more. So if I can just sum up as I go to my seat, one word to describe Kevin's character, it'll be altruistic. There's one word to describe Kevin, it'd be a giver. A brother beloved, be truly missed, but this legacy lives on. Wow. I am so honored to be here in this position. If someone would ask me to be anywhere in the world in front of the Queen of England, President, hang with Barack, I said, now nah, I gotta be with my brother, right here. You know, just a couple of days ago, I started listening to some old school music and I came across Marvin Gaye and he had a song called, Hear My Dear. Some of y'all might know that song. And I thought about Kevin. He's like Marvin Gaye. Dapper, stylish, great taste, love of music, but compassionate, caring, and all the time want to give back. So I started listening to the song a little closer. Hear My Dear. And the song talks about some moments in time where Marvin had experienced with a special person in his life. Even though it's different, it's still the same for me. And so I call this here, it's my dear brother. If you remember the song, he calls out different years and different moments in time. Some do the same thing if you allow me just a minute. 1993, I worked at Jay Riggins. Kevin was there, I was his manager. He came to me one day saying, hey, man, I need to be off. <laughs> man, I said, I can do this call, that's my brother. I have one to do it then, but I earned that. Man, my sister's graduating. I'm her family. I'm gonna be there. If today's my last day, it's just my last day. <laughs> See, we lost our parents. I said, Kevin, you can be off. <laughs> but then I knew how much he loved family. And what I told Kevin then, hey, no matter what, here's my belief. I'm glad you got the same belief. Family comes first. 1995, I was getting married. By this time, Kevin and I had built a great close relationship and I asked him if he'll be in my wedding. He said, okay, but do you need security? <laughs> I said, no, not at all. I remember standing there looking out at the audience or actually the, 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 the wedding party I saw my guy sitting there, not knowing that in 1995, some of these people become my brother, my closest friend, my confidant, mean a whole lot to me. I mean, Kevin and I would discuss everything from politics, spirituality, religion, clothes, fashion, women, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, me, Pittsburgh Steelers. That's our only conflict that we had. But we talked about relationships so much, about what they mean to us. Not just about dating, but about family, brotherhood, friends. And we talked about leaving an impression, all right? Then that was 2001. 
Kevin had an event called Unity Fest. And his whole mission and purpose was to bring people together, just like he did now. You know, he was new at doing the events, and I actually didn't need anything. He said, no, I'm good. But like I knew he would do for me, I showed up anyway. We made it happen. He had a successful event. But here's Kevin. He understands value. He appreciates everybody he's engaged with. So I'm shaking his hands on Greater Lee. He puts a hand, some money in my hand, and the same thing I would do with him like he did for me, I let him hit the floor and walked off. said, man, good night. He said, bruh, get this money. <laughs> I said, no, man, give it to somebody else. Then 2004 came. My divorce was final. <laughs> Kevin said, man, you good? I said, man, I'm good. I got a daughter out the deal, so hey, I'm winning. But what's really interesting is this. Even to this day, Kevin is still have a good relationship with my ex, and I value that. He kept that relationship separate, and we were fussing at each other through him. <laughs> <laughs> and he stayed neutral, even though I think he shouldn't have. <laughs> 2006. I had a business that opened up on Union, and my model for the occasion didn't make it. Kevin, where you at? Man, where I need to be? 15 minutes later, Kevin showed up. March 16th, 2019. I stand here honored, humble, to say, here's my dear brother. The remarkable, the fun, the loving, the caring, the talented, the creative driven, Mr. Kevin Henry Young. Kevin meant the world to me. He always had candy and gum for me and Colin. He would bring me lunch at my school, come to all my sporting events. He took me and Zach to the Universal Soul Circus, and he treated Kyle and I like princesses. It's super duper quadruple hard to imagine life without him. But I thank God for his legacy as the greatest uncle of all time. Now, I'm, I'm going to have to get a little bit off script because, well, most of y'all know this, if you know me, no offense to any of my uncles, but Uncle Kevin was the favorite. <laughs> no offense, no offense though. I know I'm saved and I know he was saved, so I will, so I know I will, she my uncle again. Good morning, everyone. Uh, okay, so I didn't really write a lot down. Um, I had, had my little passage in the you know program, but um, this is this is definitely so unexpected for me. I, I don't even think it's really hit me just yet. Um, my uncle was there for a lot of people, and um. <laughs> um he taught me so much about relationships. Um, he taught me how to be a sister. He taught me how to be a daughter. He taught me how to be a cousin. Um, he taught me so much. He, he, like Valencia said, he was always in my business. <laughs> um, but my Uncle Kevin showed me so much. I, I mean, like, giving me tickets to games to take 
whoever I was dating at the time, or <laughs> um, just listening to me talk about, you know, what I was going through. Um, I love my Uncle Kevin. I really do. Um, he taught me how to network. He always told me that Memphis was going to be where I was going to end up and that I needed to move back as soon as possible. Um, I really love you all for being here, and I really appreciate you guys. <sighs> Thank you so much. God bless you. You know, when you really have a great relationship with people, when you stand to speak at their service, you don't have to manufacture anything. It just comes straight from the heart. Uh, how we love Kevin Young. But I hear everybody talk about how warm and kind and generous Kevin was. Uh, for about 10 years straight, Kevin and I played basketball every Sunday night in the gym. And um, Kevin wasn't the kindest guy on the gym floor. <laughs> In the words of Bishop Ed, there was another side. <laughs> there was another side to him. <clears throat> Listen, Evangelist Sharon Jackson, are you present? That's you, all right, from Georgia, right? All right, she's going to minister to our hearts, and I'm going to decrease. I really, I'm honored to be a part of this celebration. I have a flight to catch in a few minutes, and I can't believe I said that on the mic, because you know how members are. When they hear you won't be there, then they go visiting. <laughs> but any old Grove people here, Ed's church is closed tomorrow. Jonah's church is closed tomorrow. <laughs> Shelton's church is closed tomorrow. Uh, Steve Young's church is closed tomorrow. <laughs> and so I'm going to get out of here. And Bishop Ed, we both shared this. This could have been held at either one of our places. We just wanted to offer our services to Pastor Young, the Young family, during this time. And Bishop Ed did the same thing. And so I'm going to take off, man. But Bishop Ed is going to finish the rest of the service or whoever he designates. Uh, to finish the rest of the service. So may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and that is our prayers. God bless you. Amen. Let me just say how honored I am to be here today and um, when Joy called me, I told her, I said, there's no way that I will not be there. Um, I packed my stuff and got my girls in the car and we drove on yesterday from Atlanta to be here. Some of you see that I have this green and gold on. I'm not a part of this class, but I am from Central. <laughs> and uh, I just left a funeral of a classmate where I had to sing there for Brother Mario Powell. But I told them, I said, there's no way that I could miss Kevin's funeral. I have to be there. So, to encourage the family, you all know I love you all. We're like family, amen. And um, so many things that were so similar, you know, the number of kids in the family, the order, the birth order, all of that was so similar. The phone numbers were almost the same. I think one number was switched around, 274-9361, 274-9631, that's it. So we're just meant to be together. But I pray that this song will bless you. When I finally see King Jesus, I'll take advantage of each moment. I'll not waste time complaining. How I lived on earth below I will walk the streets of gold Knowing his face I will behold When I get there I'll crown him king of kings When I reach the prayer Yeah. 
forever to be reminded how I lived on earth below. This is what Kevin is doing right now. I'll put this world far behind me. Yes, I will. Eternity before me. Yeah.